Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the step response of a series RLC circuit. Recall that the currents and voltages resulting from sudden application of a DC voltage source or DC current source, usually due to switching, are called the step response. The step response of a series RLC circuit involves three different cases and there is a lot of technical detail involved in each case. In this video, I will show you how to harness the programming power of Mathematica and Python to automatically calculate the theoretical values in closed form and compare with simulations. This helps to develop a deeper understanding of the step response of series RLC circuits. In circuit analysis, transform methods are commonly used to avoid solving time domain integral differential equations. A transform is a change in the mathematical description of a physical variable to facilitate computation. This is a profound concept. The Laplace transform is the most general transform technique to solve RLC circuits. In the S domain, the circuit models for the resistor, capacitor and inductor are as shown. These models easily accommodate cases where capacitor and inductor have initial voltage or current respectively. Please pause the video now if you wish to study them in more detail. The main steps in applying the Laplace transform in circuit analysis are shown here. We transform the circuit to the S domain. Circuit theory techniques work the same way in the S domain as in the time domain. We solve the circuit in the S domain and transform back to the time domain to obtain the solution. The Laplace transform circuit analysis gives us the complete solution which is made up of transient and steady state solution. Typically Laplace transforms and the inverse Laplace transform are calculated using tables as shown here. In the inverse Laplace transform, partial fraction decomposition techniques are also used. In this video, I will show you that we can use Mathematica to do the maths for us and this allows us to focus on the main concepts and developing our insights as electrical engineers. First, let's look at how the circuit works. The capacitor is initially uncharged. When the DC voltage source is switched on, the capacitor will begin to charge and store energy. Eventually, a long time after switching has occurred, the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to the applied input DC voltage. Recall that both capacitor and inductor are energy storage elements. Thus, it is possible for the energy to bounce back and forth between the inductor and capacitor. This is what makes the series RLC circuit very interesting. We are interested in determining the current and also the voltage across the capacitor and particularly how the voltage across the capacitor approaches its final value. Next, let us look at the step response parameters of the series RLC circuit, which help to describe the response. The NEPA frequency and the resonant frequency are defined as follows. The NEPA frequency depends on the resistor and inductor values only. The resonant frequency depends on the inductor and capacitor values only. 
The damping coefficient, zeta, is defined as the ratio of the Nepper and the resonant frequencies. For the series RLC circuit, it is well known that the characteristic equation takes the form shown here. This is a quadratic equation and its roots can be expressed in terms of the Nepper and resonant frequencies as shown. The damping coefficient determines the type of the response. If zeta is greater than 1, we have an overdamped response. In this case, the roots are real and unequal. The expression for the voltage across the capacitor has this general form, where A1 and A2 are some constants, S1 and S2 are the roots, and Vf is the final voltage across the capacitor, which is equal to the input voltage. If zeta is equal to 1, then the response is critically damped. In this case, the roots are real and equal. The expression for the voltage across the capacitor has this general form, and it depends only on Vf and alpha. When zeta is less than 1, then the response is underdamped. In this case, the roots are complex. For the underdamped case, we define the damping frequency omega d as follows. And the equation for the voltage across the capacitor has this general form. And we can see that it depends on Vf, alpha, and omega d. Note that the constants A1, A2, B1, B2, and D1, D2 can be determined using the initial conditions, and this is commonly discussed in first-year textbooks. Knowing the general expression of the response is useful for sanity checking when we will use Mathematica to do the calculations. The damping coefficient affects the way the voltage across the capacitor reaches its final or steady state value. When the circuit is overdamped, the voltage reaches its final value in a sluggish manner. When the circuit is critically damped, the voltage reaches its final value and the response is on the verge of oscillation. When the circuit is underdamped, the voltage oscillates before approaching the final value. This oscillation is due to the energy bouncing back and forth between the energy storage elements. Let us now look at how to theoretically determine the step response. We consider an RLC circuit as shown with half farad capacitor, one Henry inductor, and one ohm resistor. The applied input DC voltage is two volts. We transform this time domain circuit into the S domain. Using Kirchhoff voltage law and passive sign convention, we can write the circuit equation as shown here. And it is easy to show that this circuit equation can be rearranged in this form. Once we have solved for Is, we can determine the voltage across the capacitor by multiplying the current with the impedance of the capacitor. We are interested to solve for both the current and the voltage across the capacitor. Once we write the circuit equation, we can then use Mathematica to efficiently solve for us. This is the complete Mathematica code to solve for the step response of a series RLC circuit. We first define the input parameters. 
we can calculate all the step response parameters and also we can display this information in a meaningful manner. We solve the S domain circuit equation algebraically and assign this value to a variable. Using the inverse Laplace transform command, we can get the current as well as the voltage across the capacitor. We can execute this notebook. We can see that for R is equal to 1, the circuit is underdamped and therefore exhibits oscillations, which are shown here. Also, Mathematica is able to give us the closed form expressions for the current as well as the voltage across the capacitor. And this expression matches the general form showed previously for the underdamped case. The complete Mathematica code is available in the video description. Let us confirm the theoretical value by simulating the circuit in LTSpice. This is the circuit set up in LTSpice. We are using a voltage control switch which is controlled by this pulse voltage source and the switch is set to close at one microsecond. To ensure proper simulation, we are setting the initial voltage across the capacitor to be zero. When we simulate, we can look at the input voltage and the output voltage. We can see that for R is equal to one, the circuit is underdamped and exhibits oscillatory response. And this simulation result is the same as what we obtained previously using Mathematica. We can also simulate the circuit in Python. Using descriptive node labeling, we can transform the circuit into a circuit netlist as shown. In PySpice, the switch is modeled as a voltage control switch. The real advantage of using Python is that we can do the simulations and theory in one go. This is illustrated next. This is the complete Python code to simulate the circuit. We have standard declarations at the top, followed by the circuit netlist. We can also do theoretical calculations side by side with the simulations. For the three cases, the values of the coefficients are calculated using the initial conditions. These values can be found in first year textbooks on circuit theory and are programmed here. Finally, we have the plotting commands. When we run this code, we obtain the results. In this case, we can see that the voltage across the capacitor, the simulation and theory results match. And this shows the advantage of using Python. In the code, uh, the value of resistor equal to zero also corresponds to the underdamped case. If we set R is equal to zero and simulate, we can see that now there is no resistor, since there is no resistor to dissipate the energy, the energy is bouncing perfectly between the capacitor and inductor, and this leads to a perfect oscillation voltage waveform. The complete Python code is available in the video comments below. In this video, we have explored the step response of a series RLC circuit. 
We have discussed the general solutions for theory and simulations using Mathematica and Python. This was quite a fun video to make and I hope that the general codes provided are also helpful to your learning. Thank you for watching the video.